Okay, I already spent like two minutes trying to get the camera and it's still not how I like it. It's like an optical illusion because for me it is. I have like a bookshelf here and then I have my barn door here. I'm not sitting straight with the wall behind me. When I'm trying to center, <laughs> Uh, level the camera trying to go by the lines it's not working because it's not straight I, okay we're just gonna go with it hello everybody welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel my name is Jen and in, in terms of like actual filming this is my first like filming of 2022 also slash January <laughs> I wanted to do a video I don't think I mean I could be wrong I don't think I've ever 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 done a video on goals, resolutions, that kind of stuff. I, I Habits, I, I don't think I have. It's kind of the thing to do. January rolls around. Everybody wants to talk about their resolutions. I know some people have like words of the year that they pick. I I was all about that and I have like no issue with that. If, if that's what you do, that is how you start fresh and kind of get motivated to go into the new year and you do what you need to do. I find that that in itself just does not motivate me and more often than not, I will just completely fall off the bandwagon by, you know, March or May if I'm lucky. I actually read this book. I read it like at the very end of December it's called Atomic Habits. I will try to put like a picture here of it. I actually listened to it on audiobook so I don't have a physical copy of it. To be completely honest with you, I'm over the whole like self-help genre of any kind unless it's like some sort of like faith-based or like a christian book by somebody reputable that i know and that i trust i just i just really don't i feel like a lot of times these books are very much like they kind of sell this quick fix way to live your dream life and i just don't buy into that but i did read this book because i was intrigued by like when i read the synopsis i was kind of intrigued i did get a lot of good Good information for like I do highly recommend this book I think it just gives a new way of like looking at how to achieve I guess achieve your goals sort of the whole point of it is to not focus on your goals as the only thing that is meant to encourage you to continue working towards your goals. So for instance like I think it's great to have goals it's good it, it's great to have things to aspire Two, basically what I took away from the book was that, you know, a lot of times though we focus so heavily on the goal or the finish line of something that we don't spend near as much time implementing good habits to get us to that goal. And so that is why a lot of the times we, we fail and we never reach the goals we want to reach. So the key is to focus more on what can I do, like what habits can I build so that a year from now or six months from now, whatever, I am that much closer to whether it's a skill I want to learn or just like being the person I want to be, accomplishing something that I want to accomplish. If you create those good habits, generally speaking, you are going to be in a better place, you know, in the future than you were day one because then i think what happens too is if we don't reach that that we feel like we failed and it's hard to keep motivated when you feel like you are constantly failing at reaching your goals is just to think to yourself like if i spend 20 minutes every single day practicing the piano a year from now i am just going to just by the fact that i have been practicing 20 minutes a day i am going to be that much better 365 days of practicing you know 20 minutes a day imagine where you would be a year from now implementing those good habits so my point in saying all that is to say that's sort of like where and i feel like i was kind of there already because i realized that the whole just setting goals wasn't enough but instead like figuring out how i wanted to achieve those goals I'll start with some of the goals or some of the habits that I want to implement for myself this year. I'll start with the most obvious one because it's like everybody's favorite exercise, right? Like some sort, you know, it might be joining a gym. Most of us will talk about how we have a certain amount of weight we want to lose or for maybe aiming for a race. That stuff's great. But again, right, it's easy to fall off the bandwagon on our journey there if we don't plan ahead and 
basically set us set ourselves up for having good habits the last two years i was really really good about exercising i mean i felt i was winter comes and it's always a little bit tough i live in canada and like the weather here is just like the worst i did a pretty good job the last couple of years you know being in a lot of lockdowns and stuff like that of trying to stay motivated working out and the thing that i i noticed was i did the same thing i kind of talk like in my own head i was like thinking like what weight would i like to be now let me just start by saying i i have a pretty positive self like body image i've never really struggled with that meaning accepted the fact that you know as human beings <laughs> and especially as somebody who has birthed six babies it's just the natural the natural progression of your body to lose weight and gain weight and then hold on to some of the weight and it's perfectly fine so i'm okay with that like i'm totally fine with that I wasn't just feeling my i wasn't feeling my best and in my mind like the only way i could totally like completely gauge if i was doing a good job in my fitness was to like see if i was dropping pounds and i did i did i did i had this number in my mind i don't even know it was just like random <laughs> a random number that i came up with i never quite got to that and so even though i was proud of how i had stuck to working out there was a part of me that still felt like i failed which is so ridiculous and especially when i look back like i look back at pictures and like i can visibly see how my body had changed in terms of like my tone my muscle um I, and i remember like i can remember how i felt i felt stronger i felt like i had more energy I definitely could run longer i could just in general exercise for longer stints of time the weights that i used had gone up like and yet i was like fixated on the goal that i had set for myself so this year again and i've already started um i started actually like i say started winter is hard but i just decided i was just going to do what i could at home and i've already started um like in the middle of december I, that's when i kind of was like okay i just need to start and i mean i just feel better about myself i think that that's just a given anybody who you know puts fitness as a priority will tell you that you just feel better about yourself i do suffer with a lot of like chronic pain and various things like that and so it can be a struggle because i feel like i'm constantly fighting against that while i am trying to work out and get healthy but at the end of the day i still always feel like a hundred times better than i do when i'm when i'm not working out i have decided that i'm just going to try to work out at least at least three times a week i'm aiming for more like four to five times a week i'm not giving myself like times in terms of like the length of time i'm not giving myself like what kind of workouts i'm not really planning out like i have to do this and i have to do that some days i have more energy than others and so it may not be as long of a workout or as in intense of a workout but the point is is that it's manageable to me and it's easier to keep up with that way because I'm not like dreading like oh today is like leg day or whatever and I know that for some people like they need that motivation but for me it makes me dread <laughs> working out before I even do it I kind of understand what I'm saying about like the the habits versus the goals if I was to say that I had a, a goal just to be here and be as healthy as I possibly can while I'm here for myself and for my family. I don't think there's anything I can do that can add another day to my life because God is in control of that. But I do think, I definitely think that I can control the quality of life I have with what I can do. Obviously there's some things, like I said, I deal with chronic pain and there's just some things that I, I can't really do much about, but that doesn't mean I should just sit around and do nothing about the things that I can. And I wanna be here for my kids as long as possible in the best shape possible so when i start to feel a little bit like mm, that's going to be my motivation okay so another thing <laughs> that i am working on this year this is one of the situations where i do kind of i'm kind of being a little more like strict about how i do it and is more of a goal i guess is reading the bible in a year the entire bible in a year um, but it's something that i've wanted to do for a while and i did go ahead and i got this one year the one year chronological bible i just got this off of amazon the reason i mean you don't need this the reason that i did this is because i wanted to take out like the dis 
decision making of it all. <laughs> Try to figure out like how much I'd have to read to have it done in a year. I got this one because it is all like worked out for you. It has dates on the top and you know exactly how much to read and then you know you're on track no matter what. I really like it too because it's chronological order so some of it's like rearranged. Some of the Bible books are rearranged or the stories are rearranged because they're presented like as they happen, which is kind of a neat format. I am somebody who <laughs> definitely suffers from decision fatigue, usually by like five o'clock when Mike gets home. I don't want to have to make another decision again. I feel like, you know, being at home, like being a stay at home mom and then also homeschooling the kids, I feel like all day long I'm answering questions, making decisions. What are we going to do this? What are we going to do that? What are we going to eat? What are we going to like? all day it really wears on me and so that's sort of something else i'm working on this year is taking out as much of the decision making for things that don't like things that i can put on autopilot i want to go ahead and do that and this was one of those things which like it's a small thing i already know i would have felt defeated before i even started if i had to try to figure it out on my own so far i'm doing pretty good i haven't done today's yet so i have to do today's reading but that is that is my new goal for this year. I think I have all the standard, well, for myself, the standard things that I just try, try to work on, you know, every year. Yes, I have this personal goal of reading the Bible in a year, but just like spending more time in things that have to do with God's word, like reading good books by good teachers, listening to sermons, listening to podcasts that are like encouraging and uplifting and are like actually teaching me something about the Bible, about God. And then of course, in you know, my homeschool, in our homeschool, I'm just really trying to, and I say this to myself every year, you know, to really just try to savor it, um, really just try to be present, really try to take it all in because especially like this last year, like this year we're in right now of school. Eli, he, it's his last year of high school. It's crazy, like it's his last year of high school. So technically it's his last year homeschooling with us. Everly, it's like her first, I mean, she's done school, but like it's her first, I look at it as her first year where she's like, she's doing school every single day. Like she comes down, she's ready to learn, she's doing her thing. And it's just very much like, whoa, I just want to remember it all. I want to remember having my youngest and my oldest, you know, all there at the table with me because I know, you know, like I know as every year goes on uh, and kids progress through their education, you know, there's going to be less of us sitting there and I can't even because it gets me emotional, but I'm really just trying to savor it, especially this year. And then in terms of like Mike and I, our relationship, we have really been trying to focus on dates. Um, it, a lot of them have been at home dates because of the state of the world and we are constantly in and out of being in restrictions and stuff. So right now everything is closed. Uh, can't go and like eat at restaurants or anything like that. But we try at least once a week to have like an official date. And what I mean by that is like, we'll order in food. We'll maybe have like a game night. We love doing escape games. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm always like posting that we're doing like escape games. We love to watch basketball together. So we do like to try to do that. And I think we're actually doing a really good job considering um, of having date nights him and I so I want to continue doing that this year and you know it goes to show too it doesn't matter what's going on everywhere like you can still do it it might take a little more planning but you can totally still do it um just being a good mom and again like it kind of goes with the whole homeschooling thing where it's like I'm in this season of life where I have my youngest is five my oldest is 17 but nearing 18 and it's it's surreal <laughs> it's also cool it's it's a cool place to be in, you know, to see her coming into her own. I don't want to make it sound like I'm like ignoring the kids in between. <laughs> the big families, it's a whole other dynamic being the mom of like a lot of kids spanning a lot of ages and having like a a, ki a kid who's like virtually like on, on the verge of, of being an adult. It's a different relationship. It's just a different form of parenting. It's just, it can be a lot. It can be a lot but it's also wonderful all at the same time. It's like what they say, these are the good old days, right? Another thing that I want to implement this year, I guess, I don't I don't know, is I guess it's like implementing that I want to be conscious of and maybe it's something that you can consider too in your own like day-to-day -day life is 
while I'm talking about all these things that I want to accomplish, habits that I want to form, I have to be conscious of the fact that I have to make time for these things. And that might seem like super obvious, but I guess what I'm saying is I know I'm not alone in feeling a lot of times, not all the time, but you know, in certain seasons of life, feeling overwhelmed and just feeling like, really, really felt this like the last half of last year. I already feel like I've been doing a better job of that. January, it's been one month, barely one month. Just feeling that overwhelm and feeling like every single second of the day is accounted for. From like the time I wake up to the time that I close my eyes at night, there is something planned for every single second. And that's okay, like that's fine. But the thing is that like, it doesn't make any sense to think that we're gonna add, like we're gonna say, I'm gonna do these five things um, that I wasn't doing before in my already packed schedule <laughs> where I'm already feeling like I am, you know, balancing a million plates up in the air. I am, you know, I have feelings of overwhelm and stress possibly. Now I'm going to just somehow fit in these extra, <laughs> these extra to-dos or these extra goals. I have to be real conscious about making time for these things and figuring out like, where am I actually gonna fit these things in? Cause everything looks good on paper. Do you know what I'm saying? And I know sometimes we can be a little ambitious, which is okay. But I think that's another way of how like, we can set ourselves up to actually fail before we even begin. I am really being careful about guarding my time. And when I say my time, I don't necessarily mean just me. I mean like, my, my, when I think of me, I think of like our little family unit, our little cocoon of people. Like I'm just a firm believer. I do believe that we need to be there for others. I just, I, I really think that we need to be okay with going through seasons where we are just solely investing in ourselves and in our family. And I don't think that's selfish and I don't think that that's bad. I think if anything, we overextend ourselves a lot of times, especially moms, like let's be honest, we will have all these things going on and then we will still like, we don't wanna say no if somebody asks us for something outside of our home. And I'm not here to say that like, you're never available to anybody else, that you are never around to lend a hand or to help somebody else out. I'm just saying that, at the expense of yourself and at your family. I just wanna be really, really, really conscious of that this year. And I wanna make sure that that time that I wanna spend on things is coming from somewhere, which means that some things are gonna to have to be either pushed aside momentarily or dropped completely from, from our day or from our schedule or whatever it is. We have started our morning time a little bit later than we used to before. Not that I need a defense, but like I said, I do suffer from chronic pain. The mornings, first thing in the mornings, and then like really late at night is kind of like my worst times. So it's very hard for me to just like pop out of bed <laughs> in the morning. I kind of need that time to fully wake up, like physically fully wake up. So I was stressing out before because we weren't starting morning time by a certain time. But then like I was rushing into it. I was not having time to do my Bible reading um, or anything else that I wanted to do in terms of like quiet time for myself. One simple little fix, just because I was willing to let go of whatever, I don't know, whatever standard I had set for myself, which really had no rhyme or reason just because I just wanted it that way, <laughs> but I was making myself miserable. So now, now that is when I have my time. I wake up slowly and I have time to sit in bed and read my Bible, or I go downstairs and have a coffee and I sit on the couch and read my Bible. And it's okay if the kids are already awake. I have them just start on some individual things. And then we come back together and do our morning time and it's all working out fine. <laughs> so I would just encourage you as well to just remember that, see what can you drop? Cause you know what? A lot of times we hold on to things that really don't matter. It is true what they say, like whatever you, you find important, those are the things you're going to try to make time to do. And listen, I'm speaking to myself too, but like scrolling on social media and all that kind of stuff. Carve out time to do that. But like, if you want to say like, I have really gotten into reading the last couple of years, but again, I have to make time for that. I have cut down on my, like scrolling on my phone and replaced it with reading. So the time that I would be doing that, I pick up a book instead and I'm reading. Same thing with nighttime. I used to be such a night owl. Like I would go to bed, <laughs> 
at like past one in the morning. But because I wanna have time to read and I love having that like quietness at the end of the night to read, I'm usually in bed now by 10, which is huge for me. And then I still have time to read, plenty of time to read and still get a good night's rest. Just don't be afraid to make those little changes to kind of tweak your schedule everyone will be okay. <laughs> it's usually not as like we think like, what, what if I can't, because if I do that, but, and usually it's really not as dramatic as we make it seem. I think I'm gonna end there. Feel free to share with me what you have planned going into this new year. If you've already started on some of your your goals, just things you're aiming to accomplish this year. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what helps you stay motivated. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.